Welcome to our video tutorial on creating a binary adder using the D2115 development board. Before we get started, you'll need a couple of resources when you first begin using this development board in order to get it to work on your computer. So we're going to go to Terasic's website to get those resources. So here we are on Terasic's website. You can see that we're just at the home page here. You can Google Terrasic to get here, or you can write down this address. We are at www.terrasic.com.tw backslash en backslash. And from the home page here, you can scroll down to the lower left where it says FPGA main boards and select Cyclone 4. That's the board that we'll be using. And it'll skip us ahead to the Cyclone 4. And in those options, we will look for the Altera D2115 development board and education board. And by selecting that link, it will bring us to that board's main page. And at the top here, you can see there's lot, there are lots of options. We're going to choose resources. And under resources, there is a link to two important things. The first is the user manual in PDF form. This has the information that you need about the pin assignments, the input output standards, the port names, the VGA, the LCD, everything that you need. The second thing that's listed here is the CD-ROM that's included with the development board. And this CD-ROM is most important because it has the data sheets. And the data sheets for each of the ports and all of the hardware have more specific information about timing and instruction set and signals. So once you've downloaded these, you're good to go. Once you've downloaded all of the software that you need, when we go to update our drivers, you will need to remember this path and directory for choosing the correct drivers to install for your PC in order to see the development board. We're going to show you that step next, but first you may want to write down this path. And it is under your C drive. You're going to go into your program files. Go to Altera 11.0 Quartus Drivers USB Blaster. This is the path you'll be the path name you'll be selecting when you tell your PC to look for these drivers. Once you have all of your software downloaded to your computer and installed, you will need to go to the device manager to update your drivers so that it can see the USB blaster. You, this is when you will need that path name and directory I gave you just before. And under device manager, you will go to other devices. You will search for other devices and you should see USB blaster there. And when you open the USB blaster window, you can go to driver and tell your tell it to search my computer for drivers. And that's when you give it that directory and then select OK. This is what the window will look like after you've selected. So now that our computer sees the development board, we're going to open up the Quartus 2 software and use the new project wizard to create our first project. And it's, it's a greeting window and you'll see it when you first get there. And it guides you through the steps that you need to do. You need to create a directory for your project. You have to, you know, name your project and also set the top level entity. And this is, if you're new to using the Quartus 2 software, um, perhaps you're familiar with this already, but when you do go to compile and implement your design, you, you may come up with errors that you did not, your top level entity is undefined. So just be, um, be you know, cognizant of that. That is something that you need to declare in before you compile in order to get your design to successfully be synthesized. So now that we have our directory, the next step is to add any files that we want as part of our project that may be pre-existing. 
we also need to, to bring in our user libraries. So I'm going here to the um, user libraries and by clicking on that, it will take me to global libraries. I can set any global or project libraries that I want. And in the Cordis 2 files under Altera 11.0 Cordis 2 um, libraries, you can select mega functions. And that entire folder is one huge library that you really need to get any of your Verilog code to compile. So make sure you get that. And once you've got that, you can go on and select family and device settings for our Cyclone 4E. That is the chip that we're working with. And you need to select it out of the options below. All the possibilities. That is printed in your tutorial handout. You can click next. And the final screen is you do not need to make any adjustments there. Summary, finish. So now that we have our new project created, we need to add some code to it. So we go to new and we select a Verilog file under new and then a new Verilog file will open and we can insert our code. We obviously have written our code already, so we're just going to copy and paste that into our file. And you want to make sure to save it because it does not automatically save and to save it under the same name as your project, as the top level entity. It'll make your life a lot easier. So for this project, we needed information on pin assignments, input output standards for all of the signals we're sending in and out. And all of that information is in the DE2115 user manual. For example, here is the seven segment display and all of the switches and their pin assignments. You'll insert those pin assignments by going to assignments, assignment editor, and opening the assignment editor, and then inserting all your values and port names as necessary. For this tutorial, we'll just be importing some assignments that we've already made by going to import assignments and then choosing our file and importing that into the new file, which is our project for this tutorial. So in, in the future, you can use System Builder to select what, you're, what hardware you're using and it'll automatically generate all of your pin assignments. But if you need to do it the long, hard way the first time around, this is what you're going to be doing. And for this particular project, you're going to end up with close to 200 pin assignments because each of the pins that you're using does need two assignments. It does need the input-output standard and it does also need the location. And like I said, all of that information is here in the Altera manual for DE2115. Like, for example, here, uh, you see the pin assignment, but you also see the input-output standard. And like I said, we're going to be using the LEDs, the seven-segment display, and the switches and also the LCD controller. So for the LCD controller, you will need more than the pin assignments. So you'll also be referencing the LCD data sheet to get information off of that on how to use it. To use the system builder, go to your desktop where you will find the system builder icon that's after you've downloaded all the software and insert your project name. You'll want to make sure that these things match. Once your project name has been entered, you'll want to select everything that we're using. We're using the clock, the LEDs, the buttons, we're not using the TV decoder, uh, the seven segment display, the LCDs, the switches, and then select the correct input output voltage and standard. Generate, click generate. And when the new window opens, this is where you're saving this file to. And you'll need to reference this because then you will go and open that file directly, binary adder. And when that opens in the Cordis 2 software, this is then where you will add your project files. Here's just an example of some code and what has been used here. And when you open the assignment editor, 
you will see that it automatically generated all of the pin assignments and input output standards that we need to use all of this hardware. We're not using all of it, so you could delete the ones that you're not using if you just want to make it a little bit clearer. But that, there, that's the system builder. Before coding the LCD controller, you'll want to make sure you downloaded its datasheet from that CD-ROM link we showed you in the beginning of this tutorial. In determining your code for the LCD controller, this datasheet is going to be your best friend. If you do need to send it 8-bit binary, this is the chart that you can use to determine each and every character uh, that you want to display the upper and lower form. You will also need to reference the command, the commands for the data bus and also what signals need to be sent with RS and RW. And all of that information, including the initialization sequence that the LCD controller does need to go through in order to work, is all here in the data sheet. And just, just to note something that we came across as we were building this, this sequence does not say to turn on the display, but you do need to do it as your intuition probably already told you. Just make sure to include that in your initialization sequence. So now that we've magically gotten our pin assignments and some a little gnome magically created all of our code for us, we are ready to compile our design. And in compiling our design, we ran across an error. And that error was, as I mentioned to you, um, generated out of the top level entity not being defined. And this is a pretty common error when you are first getting started. We copy and pasted our code, but the module name was something different other than what the top level entity was. And so we just needed to go back in and redefine that. And now on the second go around, our code will hopefully compile. So we wanted to show you the full compilation process just to show the pretty standard timing that it takes for the, the design to compile. You can see in the lower left corner the progress in each of the steps and it is you know it's not going to happen right away and if your computer's going slow these computers are great and it still takes a while so don't expect it to happen right away don't be afraid if it's if it's not happening right away for you and and just as a note you'll see lots of blue warnings pop up. It will still compile with warnings. Obviously, if you get an error, it's not going to compile and you will need to double click on the error when listed here and it'll take you to the place in your code where the error is being generated from. So you just saw the note that it was successful. We're gonna go down to program device and the programmer window is going to open. Our USB hardware, USB blaster, is showing up. If it was not, you would select on hardware setup and select USB blaster, and then just close the window, and then it should appear. You're gonna click the start button, and you can watch in the upper right corner as it progresses through the synthesis. So this is just a snippet of what the end results will be when you've compiled and synthesized your design.